Let's go to Danny. Is that it, Danny? All right, Danny in Billings, Montana. What's up, Danny? How we doing? Hey, Dr. John, how are you? So good. How about you? I am hanging in there. That sounds sick. Come on. Hanging in there? <laughs> it's pretty cold, so, you know, do what you can do. Oh, how cold is it? Um, it's like five right now. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Nope. There are some people who believe in hell, and people who believe in hell think hell is hot, and I might disagree. Because you know what hell sounds like? Five degrees. Five. That's What's that? Planes, trains, and automobiles. He's like, how cold is it out here? One. Ah, five degrees. Okay, so yes, I can see you're hanging on there. That's not great. So other than that, though, what's going on? Yeah, so um, I'm calling because, um, so I'm 24 years old, and I, I I've love been married the way, now. I love the way you're dancing <laughs> around this. This is, so, this is so good. Okay, so you're 24? Uh, yep, I've been married now for about six months, um, and two months into um, my husband, Matt, and my marriage, we um, took custody of his two kids, so full custody of his six-year-old and 10-year-old um, from his previous marriage. And I, I don't know, <laughs> I'm just kind of here and going along with it and figuring it all out. So before that, um, they're from Alabama. And so we <laughs> were just kind of there with them. What do, you, what do you mean you're going along with it? <laughs> they're your kids. That's your husband. What do you mean? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Are you not, um, are you not so, a huge fan? Um, I never really thought. Say I it out loud. Say it out loud. Are you not a huge fan? I mean, I mean, I'm not. I mean, I love them. Um, but I never thought I was going to have kids. And so part of the reason that I think it was so appealing <laughs> to be with him is because he didn't want any more kids. Um, and had these two wonderful kids who live with their mom who is doing really awesome. Um, and then she fell into, um, opiate addiction. And so now they're with us full time. So they've gone through a whole lot and I'm going through it too. <laughs> yeah. So you've got two kids who've, I mean, they've got a lot of trauma coming yeah. To move with in with dad in the middle of the year from Alabama yeah. to five degrees to new mom who's twenty four. How much older is he than you? He's thirty one. Thirty one? Okay, so that's not that's not a lot. Um okay, so you said you said you didn't want kids, but you married a guy with two kids. Oh, that yeah. seems like the they algorithm doesn't us, work. Though. Do what? I know. They didn't live with us though, and I thought, oh, it'd be so great. They're gonna be there we can be there and support them um but not i guess be in it full time as selfish as that sounds and now oh, we're here and we're doing it all full time and doing all the extracurriculars and all the schooling and taking them to counseling and doctor's appointments and all of those things it's, it's a lot so i can hear you smiling almost so hard because if you stop smiling you're going to start crying is that where you're at yep yeah yeah so, how can I help? Because, yeah, you're there. Like, it's here. Are you thinking about leaving the marriage? Um, I not, mean, not what you signed up for? Kind of, yeah, but it's kind of what I've been thinking about most of the time. Um, but these kids also, so they lost their stepdad to overdose. Um, and so I'm so scared to be somebody else that leaves them mm -hmm. after all this trauma that they've been through. Yeah, and but so, it, it, it's also... I'm worried for them to have a new maternal figure in their life that doesn't like them. I mean, I do love them. And you love there. them, but you don't like what they've done to your precious little life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's just hard to accept that and not feel so selfish. Why is that hard to accept? That you, like, you married a guy with two kids and now those two kids are there and, like, this is our life now. Like, what do you think you're missing out on? I think before we had the, the kids with us here, we were out all the time adventuring and backpacking and climbing, and we're just all over the place doing everything. And now we're, you know, taking the kids to Taekwondo lessons and going to dance lessons. And it's just my whole life has gone from doing what I want to do when I want to do it to living by this other schedule. Yeah. And so it just feels like everything has changed and my relationship has changed so drastically. What's your husband say when you tell him all this? Um, so we just started marriage counseling. Um, he's 
I guess understanding, but worried. Yeah, he should be because his wife's about to leave him. Yeah. He should be real worried. Yeah. And he's also got his fair share of, of mental health challenges. He's a, he's a vet who has some, uh, some PTSD things Mm -hmm. he's struggling with. And so it's just, I don't know. It just all feels like a mess all the time. Yeah. What part of this can you control? I can control how engaged I am with kids and I don't know. I try to control it in the most like micro ways, like making sure that they have the healthiest lunches possible every single day. And no, 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 sure no, 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 with, with that you're talking about duty and you have a duty right now. Cause you, did you adopt them? Were you part of the adoption? Um, no, we, we can't yet. Okay. Have you started that process? No, we have to wait quite a few years. Okay. So they're just living in full custody with dad right now. Correct. Okay. So back out before you start the duty stuff, you're playing mom right now and you're playing care. You're, play, you're basically being like a, like a big babysitter and you were married for six months to somebody and now that's all sideways. Like what can you control inside your own head? Or let me, let me, let me ask it another way. Are you done? Mm-hmm. Cause if you're done, say you're done. And say it out loud. If you are grieving the fact that the world just went sideways on you, I think you signed up for this. That's just what it sounds like. You married a guy with two kids and you can't be stunned that two kids now, that the guy with two kids now has two kids. Um, But it is a different arrangement than you and your heart were hoping for. Um, But you can either just be done and walk away or you can grieve this. It's a mess. It's not what it was. We used to be able to run the world and do everything. And now our world is different. And now how do we make desire? How do we practice desire? How do we love one another? How do we have crazy fun adventures and hikes and crazy fun sex and crazy fun stuff and still raise a 10 year old and six year old? Like how do we do those things together? Um, or like, man, I'm out. It feels like those are your two choices. Or the third one yeah. is, which help. <laughs> third one is actually what most people choose, Danny, which is I'm just going to stay in this and be miserable for the rest of my life. That's how most people do it. Yeah, it's kind of where I feel like I am right now, like teetering on this decision. Don't choose misery. Yeah. Don't. So convince me that these two kids and that your husband that you loved a lot a few months ago, um, Convince me they're not worth creating a brand new wild adventure for your life. Like, what are you missing? Um, I guess. Let, let me ask it this way. Here's it. Let me ask it this way. So I used to live in Houston in a, in a big city. And uh-huh. in my head, I was always going to concerts and Astros games and sporting events and things like that. Then we moved out to West Texas where there's not a major sports team. There's college teams and things like that. But I'd always talk to my wife about wanting to get back to the city, back to the city, back to the city, back to the city. And then finally one day she just called me on and said, what what is it about the city? And because our life's very similar to what it was. I was like, no, man, the Astros game. And she she nailed me up to the wall using data. I went to about (laughs) one or two games a year. And I went like on a big fishing trip to the beach, like to Galveston, like once a year. And I went to concerts like two or three times a year. Yeah. And I did those same things in West Texas because I would drive to Houston and I'd go to like two concerts. We'd go to a Stroh's game and I'd go fishing. Like, so my life really hadn't changed. My fantasy about what my life used to be, that's what changed. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? So I what do. would you, I, what, what are you actually missing? I think what I'm missing the most is a world that's not controlled by other people. So we're still in all of this court stuff in and out. And it just feels like every day, all my decisions are being made by somebody else. Okay. Unpack that. All your decisions. Brushing your teeth? <laughs> no. When you go to the bathroom? No. Where you go to the bathroom? Gross. Go in the bathroom. Don't be <laughs> disgusting. 
Like, go in an actual potty. <laughs> uh, and I said potty because I have a five-year-old. That's ridiculous. I meant to say toilet. I live in the woods, though, so. <laughs> you can. I live in the woods, too. It's so great. You can go wherever you want to, man. Um, do you have pets? We don't. And okay. I like Who decided way. that? See, like the, the all language. What, what, what decisions are being decided for you? I guess my general daily schedule outside of work and personal time. Okay. Like? Um, like what I'm doing in the evenings, what I'm doing on the weekends. Okay. What are those, what are those things? Like Taekwondo. <laughs> um, and doing... Have you ever taken Taekwondo? No. How incredible would it be if you signed up for Taekwondo? You'd become a ninja. I mean, I guess my kid really likes it. <laughs> yes. So here's what I'm saying. Here's, here, here's what I'm getting at. Here's what I'm getting at. Okay. And uh -huh. I'm trying to smile through it because I know it's hard for you. Okay. Um, here's the thing. The world took a left turn on you for whatever reason, whatever we could, you and I could debate all day long, whether what your role in this is. I think it's yeah. high. You think it's probably low. Who, that, that's a fun drinking game. More real, more important is here's where you're at. Yeah. And your ultimate question is what am I going to do next? Am I going to leave my husband who I loved a few months ago um, in our fantasy life that we lived as a 24 year old? Um, I didn't want kids and now I've got two, even though I'm married again, I have two kids and I got, now I got two and I'm making lunches and I have to ask myself, am I going to trade the random camping trip or the random hiking trip for Taekwondo classes? Am I going to trade sitting on the couch watching Netflix for taking kids to school? Am I going to trade ordering in DoorDash for making a healthy dinner for, you know, or having my kids, teaching kids how to make dinner for themselves and all of us doing that together? You're going to have to yourself, ask yourself that. But what I don't want yeah. you to do is to use words like all and everything and no more and those big catastrophic end of times words because they're, uh, they're, they're almost always not true. So here's yeah. your homework assignment. Are you ready? I am. Homework assignment number one, I don't think you fully told your husband how bad things are. Have you? It's starting to come out in counseling. But yeah, so you haven't told him yet. There yet. You need to look him in the eye and say, I'm considering leaving you. If you are indeed doing that. Or if you need to say out loud, my whole world exploded. I know yours did too. This is not what I signed up for. And I'm working through what it's going to look like for me to be here. That's a fair thing to say. That's an honest thing to say. And you need to say that out loud. Because then you both can work on what that looks like. If you just him haul around and like, yeah, I don't know, I'm just thinking about, man, that gets messy. And he thinks he's, he's helping out and he's not because he's not getting at the root issue. Okay. Yeah. And by the way, you're going to make him crazy because he's going to think he's the problem. And the problem right now is your choices. And then the third thing is I want you to write down these stories because you've got a lot of stories in your head. Stories mm -hmm. about what you wanted for your life what happened to you, what's fair, what's not fair. I don't have any time left. I've got no whatever left, all my whatever. I want you to write those stories down, every one of them. And then I want you to draw a line across the page and demand evidence. Is this one true? Is every one of my decisions now over? No. Am I able to pack up and go camping anymore? No, nope, I'm not allowed to do that anymore because I got two 10-year-old and a six-year-old. Can we get babysitters and still go camping? Can we, after, you know, the shock of two, a 10-year-old and a six-year-old joining our house, can we get back to a great sex life? Can we get back to date nights? Can we get back to these things? And the answer to all that is yes. It's just if you want to work for it or not. Yeah. Yeah. And so my question for you is this. Are you, do you want to work? Are you going to or not? I, I think you're out. Yeah, I don't know yet. I hope you're not. I hope you will create a whole new adventure and you'll stick it out. I really do. And not just because of the kid. I mean, there's, there's all that. But for you, I think you've got a monster adventure ahead of you. Of course, it's going to be hard and brutal and completely different than you thought. But man, 
It could be so much better than you could have ever dreamt. But it sounds to me like you're done, man. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know yet. <laughs> I see. I don't believe you. I think you do know, and you don't want to say it out loud, and that's fair. I won't, I won't force you to do it on the, on the internet, on the podcast. I want you to practice. I want you to pretend you're staying. Pretend you're staying for 30 days and go all in. And all in means you're going to be honest with your husband. Going all in means you're going to attempt to get some skills that you don't have right now. Going all in means you're going to sign up for a class that you never thought you would take, like Taekwondo. That you're going to get a cookbook. I don't know if you ever bought one of those before. Whatever it is. Why don't you go all in for 30 days? I want you to tell your husband, I'm going all in for 30 days, but I'm really nervous. Be honest with him. Don't let him drown at the, uh, all alone at the end of this thing. I think you got something awesome at the end of this one. Don't bail out, Danny. 